What's going on guys? So here in this box is a brand new controller from Big Big One. It's called the Elitist S and it's basically a third party controller for the Switch, uh, but it also works with Windows and Android. And as you can see, it looks very similar to the Pro controller for the Nintendo Switch. And so basically in this video, we're gonna be unboxing it and then I'll take some time afterwards to basically try out the controller, uh, test it out, and, and then I'll come back and give you guys a review of it. So let's go ahead and take a look at this and unbox it. So first of all, uh, if you look at the front, like I said, it looks pretty much just like a Pro controller. Um, basically a pro controller but cheaper so it has a feature called gyrocon which i'm assuming is just the feature where you can basically tilt your controller and it'll do things so basically most motion controls like the pro controller has it also has a couple customizable back buttons and then it has next speed wireless technology um, basically it's just a wireless wireless controller and then here on the back let's see what we got here so uh switch remote activation so that's nice basically like the pro controller you can press a button on here and it'll turn on your switch without having to go and you know press the actual power button on it and of course they advertise an ergonomic design um, it says it adopt ergonomic l-shaped grips to provide a more natural hold than other models uh, so obviously we'll try that out once we open it up um, gaming wireless performance so like i said wireless controller it also has a low energy consumption and large capacity battery so it's supposed to be able to play for 30 hours which is i believe is pretty similar to the pro controller i'll throw up the hours of the pro controller on the screen right now um, but i'm pretty sure it's a, a you know pretty similar number uh, more realistic gaming experience, so that's advertising their, their Gyrocon, which basically, you know, motion, motion controls with your controller. Um, and then additional buttons for advanced operations, so like I said, it has a couple customizable buttons on the back. So now let's go ahead and open this thing up and see what's inside. Alright, so here it is, and we got the controller. And first let's take a look at the, the papers in here, so got a 12 month warranty, which is pretty standard. You also have a manual that will, it's actually, it looks like a pretty in-depth manual. Most items nowadays do not come with something this in-depth. I'll take a look at this later and kind of break it down for you guys and show you any of the, the cool features. But let's go ahead and take a look at the controller, because obviously that's what we're here for. So we got our charging cable. And one thing to point out is it's micro USB, which is a little bit disappointing. Uh, it'd be cool if it was USB-C, but that's not a deal breaker by any means. We also have, I guess this is just a sticker in here. So if you, nope, that's just a quality control thing. Not a sticker. We also have a dongle. So this is like the, I think this is the 2.4 gig um, dongle you can use. So if you're playing it on your PC, you can plug this in and that'll, that'll give you wireless. Um, you can also do Bluetooth on the PC, I believe. And here's the controller. Let's go ahead and pull it out, see what it looks like. All right guys, so here it is. And at first touch, it actually feels extremely nice in the hands. It kind of has like a soft grippy touch to it all over the controller. So the entire controller grips to your hands, it's not sliding around like crazy. Um, has some concave analog sticks on top that help keep your um, thumbs in place, I'm assuming. Got your D-pad, feels nice. B, A, X, Y. Everything's nice and clicky. You can see it already has some, some battery going back and forth. Um, on the sides, you got your basically digital buttons, R1, L1. Well, on here they call it R, L, Z, L, Z, R, just like on the Switch. Got your sync button up here. On the back we have our two programmable buttons, as you can see, one here, one here, and I believe this back cover comes off. Yeah, so if you pull that little trigger right there, it comes off, and I guess the battery's in there. It doesn't look like, doesn't look like the battery is removable, but I think there is a reset button right there in case you need to reset the controller. Um, and these are actually, looks like these two pads right here are actually the buttons that this back plate pushes down on, which is pretty cool and yeah just at first glance pretty satisfied and pretty impressed with the overall makeup of the controller um, it feels nice it looks nice looks just like the pro controller feels at first touch like I said it feels really nice and I think it actually feels a little bit better than pro controller but later on I'll bring the pro, pro controller in here and kind of you know compare the looks and feels to them just so you can get a one-to-one -one comparison all right guys so there's your unboxing now I'm gonna go and basically try the controller for a few days um, see what I like about it, see what I don't like. Basically test out all the features and come back with a full review and let you guys know if you should buy this thing. All right guys, so I've been using this controller for a bit now. So let's go ahead and talk about it a little bit more in depth. And let me just first of all say that if you are looking at Switch Pro controllers, this should definitely be in the running for the controller you buy. Um, it's a really good controller. I've been using it for a few days now. And I really like it. Um, so first of all, let's talk about the price. So if you're going for just the regular Nintendo Switch Pro controller, which I have right here, it retails for $70, I believe, but you can frequently get it for about $60. Bucks. 
Now the Dig Big One controller goes for about 50 bucks when I've seen it on Amazon. So you're already getting 10 to 20 dollars of savings there, so that's good. And so let's talk about the feel. So first of all, like I mentioned earlier, in the hands, it feels real nice in the hands. It's a very similar feel to the Pro controller. And it has this, I guess the benefit is it has this nice soft grippy material on it. Whereas the Pro controller is a very slippery surface. You know, I don't have too many problems gripping the regular Pro controller. Um, but I don't, you know, I don't do super long gaming sessions. Now, if you do a super long gaming session and your hands get sweaty, this gripping material right here is definitely going to help you out. Um, and it's all over the controller, the back and front, so that's nice. Now, in terms of the analog sticks on the Big Big One, uh, you know, I can kind of go both ways. I think it's really nice that they got a concave shape, so you can keep your fingers in there. But they're, they're not super grippy, so it, it kind of depends on how you play. If you like to rely on grippiness, like this right here is very grippy. Um, but there's no concave there, so your fingers can slip off pretty easily um, if they're not attached to the grip. Now this one, not super grippy, but it has a concave shape, so your fingers are not really going to slip off. Um, I think it works just as well. It's just a different feel, so you got to get used to it. And in terms of the buttons, the buttons are very similar as well. The only thing I will say, these buttons, I think you have to click a little bit harder than the, the Switch Pro Controller. That might just be because I've used the Switch Pro, Pro Controller so much that it's broken in. Uh, but these are kind of a softer feel. You don't have to press them as hard, whereas on this controller, you do have to press them harder. To be honest, I don't think it's a big deal either way. I think it's just something you have to get used to. Um, but yeah, I mean, the controller works great. No issues. It does have some cool features with these, these back buttons, some cool things you can do with them, which I'll show you later on when I show you a game. But yeah, I mean, in terms of functionality, it's not really lacking anything. Um, the only thing I can really think of that it's lacking is it can't. It doesn't have NFC, so you can't scan your Amiibo on this controller, which, you know, I don't really use that, so that's not a, not a big deal for me. Now, if you're scanning tons of amiibos then I, you know i might recommend getting the regular pro controller not the big big one but you can always scan your scan your amiibos on your switch anyway um but yeah that's just one thing to think about other than that all the functionality is just about the same it just feels a little bit different and it's a little bit cheaper um in terms of form factor and size and weight they're both very similar um and you really can't go wrong either way now there's one feature that i've mentioned that i think really makes this controller stand out compared to the switch pro controller and those are the back buttons back here. You can actually program these to do different sequences of button presses. So let's say you're playing Super Smash Bros. And you want to do a combo that's A, B, Y, X real quickly. Um, you know, obviously that takes time, A, B, Y, X. But what you, can, what you can do is you can hold down this button right here, which is called the FN button. And you can hold down the back button you want to use. And then after you do that, you can press your sequence of buttons. Press the FN button again, and it basically programs it to the back button. So now... When you press this back button, it'll automatically do the A, B, Y, X, and all you had to do is press one button. So it's pretty cool. Um, you know, it's fighting games and other stuff like that. It's pretty useful, especially if you have a complex combo. Um, you know, you just got to hit the combo once with your sequence, and then you can just use it all the time. I guess it's kind of cheating, but it's a pretty cool feature. All right, guys, so I've been showing you the controller, but let's go ahead and see it in action. So as you can see on my screen right now, I've got a switch pulled up, and I have my controller connected. Uh, it's pretty simple to connect to the switch. You just hold down the sync button for three seconds and start searching. And then you just go to your switch with another, another controller and click pair. Or you can just plug in your USB cable from your switch to the controller and it pairs just fine. And as you can see here, we're scrolling around now. So let me just go ahead and go to the system settings and I'll show you the, uh, basically show you the controller. So, so controller vibration is something that I don't think I've mentioned yet. Um, but it does have controller vibration. It's pretty strong as well. It's got three different settings. You can do weak normal or, or strong. Uh, I think it actually is a little bit stronger than the you know the pro controller. Let's go ahead and let me show you the controller sticks. So if I click on the left stick you can see that it scrolls around just fine. No issues there. Same with this one. Pretty normal controller stick. Um, I believe there's somewhere on here as well where you can see your buttons. I don't need to change the mapping but um, yeah and like I said Amiibo's you can't scan, scan Amiibos on this, but you can on the Pro Controller. One thing to point out. Let's go ahead and boot up Super Mario Odyssey, and I'll show you some stuff. So, like I mentioned earlier, you can actually use the motion controls on this. So, let me show you real quick. So, let me zoom out on here so you can see my controller. So, if you flick forward, we throw Mario's hat. If I flick it like this, he kind of does a spinny thing to the right. Spin it to the left, he does a spinny thing to the left. And if I flick it up, he flicks his hat upwards. So, that's pretty cool. And... Let me see if you can hear some vibration. Yeah, so basically whenever I jump and do a ground pound, you can hear it vibrate. Um, and it's definitely a stronger vibration than on the normal Switch controller, or the uh, the Pro controller. 
And yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool to be able to use your motion, motion controls to do these these moves right here, which kind of adds another la layer of layer of flavor to the game. Now, let me show you the controller mapping for the back buttons. So like I mentioned, you hold down this button right here, the FN, and then you hold down a back button. So I'm going to hold down this button and the right back button for a couple seconds, and then it starts basically breathing orange, as they call it right here and I'm gonna do my my sequence now so I'm gonna do jump jump crouch jump and then we'll click the button again and it should end it I might actually have to click the back button again there we go alright so once it stops flashing orange it's done so now all I have to do is press the back button and it'll do my sequence you can see I didn't press anything else and it did one jump two jump crouch and another jump so that's pretty neat I can do it with other the other side as well um, hold down the left trigger or the left bumper, not a bumper, but the back button and the FN button, and we'll do B Y X A B and a running jump. I'm not actually sure if you can program analog movements, but we will see. So yeah, you can't you can't program analog movements, but you can program all the button presses. Um, Either way, it's, it's a pretty neat feature. It's something I never really thought about using, um, but it's definitely definitely a feature I'm going to use um, in Super Smash Bros. I mean, that's like that's a clutch feature. Um, I'm sure some people will tell me that I'm cheating, but you got to utilize your resources, guys. You know other people you know other people are using it, so you might as well use it as well. And you may have seen this on the controller while I was showing you, but it also has a screenshot button, just like the Pro Controller. Uh, just something else to point out. Now one more game I want to show you that also can take advantage of the motion features is Mario Kart. So if we pick Mario Kart, we'll just go easy right now, 50cc. I'm just going to scroll through real quick and make sure I pick motion controls, which I think I actually skipped. Let's see. Press the plus button. There we go. So we'll press, there we go, motion controls. And we'll just pick this first one right here. All right, so here we are, guys. We're doing motion controls, so as you can see, turning with my controller, it's gonna be pretty pretty easy because I'm on 50 cc right now. Um, but yeah, it's just another, like I said, it's another la layer of flavor to the game. Um, you know, it's it's definitely not necessary. You don't have to use motion motion controls for any of these things, but it's just. It's a cool thing to do. And so like I mentioned earlier, you can also use this controller on an Android device or a Windows machine. So let me go ahead and show you how I use it on an Android device. So it's pretty similar to the Switch, but you also hold down the A button while you're holding down the sync button. And it does this little flashing thing right here. And if you go to Bluetooth on your device, it'll pop up as this Elitist S, which I've already connected. And there you go, we got a blue connection and it's connected now. And so it's pretty straightforward. As you can see right now, I'm scrolling through the, the just the play shop. Um, I can press the B button to click on something, A button to go back, and so forth, so on and so forth. You can play some games and stuff as well if you want to. And so I'm assuming if you're looking into this controller, you're probably looking to use it on a Switch, um, but it's always nice to have the flexibility to use it on an Android device or Windows machine, just in case you need a controller for those things. Um, so yeah, I mean, it doesn't never hurts to have the flexibility. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it helped you out. And just as a last look, here's your Pro Controller and here's your Elitist S Controller by Big Big One. I really don't have anything bad to say about it. I mean, it's pretty similar to the Pro Controller um, minus the NFC and it's cheaper as well. Um, plus it has these back buttons. I mean, that's like a game changer for games like Super Smash Bros and stuff where you can um, program some shortcuts. So I'll throw the Amazon link down in the description if you wanna check it out. But yeah, I mean, I can't really say anything bad about the Elias Gus controller. Uh, it works great. It's basically just as good as the Pro Controller, but a little bit cheaper. And yeah, you really can't go wrong with it. So thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to like and subscribe. Hope you enjoyed the video, and have a great day.